Hey, I'm Frank, and this is my Trail Turtle, also known as Truckee, more popularly known as an FJ Cruiser. And we've been gone for a couple of weeks, and I think it shows. <laughs> I think it shows on me. <laughs> um, but I have the utmost respect for how this thing has handled um, two weeks of living out of it, um, off-road, dirt, mud, rain, um, this group, phenomenal. Um, if I had to pick something that underperformed, it would probably be my Garmin. <laughs> my in-reach was a total disaster. <laughs> it, I've had it for years, it's never given me a problem, but not being able to um, track, communicate, send messages, that kind of stuff, God forbid, need an emergency, didn't work, uh, which is kind of a bummer. And my sleeping bag, um, definitely underpacked. Um, and we looked, this is let this be a lesson. We looked at the weather up and down the entire trip, and I don't think there was a single night um, under 60 or 55 degrees. Um, there hasn't been a single night over 45 degrees. <laughs> so, um, so I took my uh, happy butt over to REI and got a new uh, sleeping bag, and that overperformed. That was, I found an incredible bag, and I, I gotta say, I've slept through every night since, and what a game changer a full night's rest is. So. Shall we walk around? Let's do it. All right, so let's start in the back since that's where we're already at. Um, I've got a goose gear set up here, a drawer system um, with a Dometic uh, fridge. This is the 55 with the ice maker, uh, cause I fancy. And down here is the stove and cutting board. So all of the living activities kind of take place back here. Um, a lot of options you can do here. I went with a really thin stove because I like things to be compact and slide in nicely. Found these straps at REI, which is an awesome deal and they work perfect. I've had them for years now. Um, slide that back in for you. You can take a look at the rest. Drawer system. Um, storage. This is my this is my base to what I call my fast kitchen. Has all my goodies in here for cooking, jet boils, fuel, um, and some other miscellaneous stuff for making coffee and all that kind of fun stuff. Spare parts. Uh, sleeping bag and sleeping pad go right on top strap down with a stretch it um, And I have some other miscellaneous stuff strapped down up top because I do have some room up here So I make use of that space with other miscellaneous stuff. That I don't normally need a lot of access to it's just there um, And then tucked away back here in the corner don't know if you can see it But there is a power tank back there to help uh, speedily air up and it also has a new purpose And we'll get to that when we get to the roof so uh, I've got some lube there for the ball joints, for the uniball joints, um, and some other random stuff there, air down kit, um, and then the hose and line for the power tank. So, and then my random rain boots. Also phenomenal purchase on the way here. <laughs> because we were not planning for rain, um, I always bring rain boots and I always bring um, a zero degree bag, but two of which I decided not to on this super long trip across a super huge country. So. Ended up picking up some new rain boots, and they've been phenomenal. I will probably only buy those rain boots from now on. <laughs> if they don't get stolen halfway through the trip. <laughs> so coming over here to the side, we got the, the inside of the FJ, the main, where all the, the main activities happen, right? The cockpit. Um, so S-Pod starting off here on the left. Um, all the comms on the right. So we've got the iPad that runs uh, the mapping, the offline GPS maps, uh, radio that's wired into the FJ and that runs to an antenna out the back so we get the optimal signal out of a, out of a handheld. Um, eventually I will put a mobile unit in there but that handheld has been phenomenally good um, with range once it runs to an external antenna. So um, Goose Gear platform continues to the back. I've got a seat delete system here uh, so I can, so before I put in the um, drawers and the fridge. This used to be kind of a stealth camping where I could sleep back here if I wanted to in the sleeping pad. Um, incredible anchor points. Um, I, I've got a tote that goes back here. Um, and then on the other side, we'll get to that in a sec. First aid kit, always readily accessible. We've actually needed that on this trip. Uh, why, is, why, Frank? <laughs> um, I don't know if you can see it now, but I actually cut my finger, um, of all things, on a buckle. This guy, actually, specifically. This dull, non-sharp, rounded buckle, I crushed it like this right there. And I think it was the crushing pressure that just broke the skin open. Um, so I needed stitches. And that was night one. 
like the morning of night one. Got up, was packing up, pulled the cinch strap, and they got caught between a carabiner on the other side, and they just crushed it. And um, thanks for uh, Jesse and Robert for helping me out with as I held it shut to stop the bleeding. Um, they helped wrap it and keep it uh, clean and, and, and whatnot. And then we I went to the urgent care in Moab, <laughs> which by the way is a very nice facility. And the doctor and the nurses are super hilarious. Great sense of humor. But they stitched me up and um, actually Bond um, took the stitches out last night. So that was a kind of fun little camp. Then we got to sit around and he pulled the stitches out. And it's been great since. Got it all back. It's fully functional. So not only did I cut my finger, got it stitched, it healed all during the trip. That's how long this trip is. So out to the front, this is what I like to call the the fun part, all the goodies, the business. Um, so Truckee is sitting on 35s. Uh, those are Falcon um, MTs. Um, and those are wrapped around a set of 17 inch uh, fuel beadlock wheels uh, in red. And we've got a, a, the big business up front is the DeMello uh, bumper. That is, a, I do have a set of aluminum bumpers front and rear. And the main reason I went that way is because I'm not rock crawling. I'm traveling long distances. I do need some protection for those old um, But by and large, um, I need something to put a winch behind, a, a good pull point and some protection. And this does the job at a, at a decent lightweight. Um, I believe uh, Jason quotes these at, uh, Jason DeMello quotes these at about 45 to 55 pounds, depending on you know, the tubes and whatnot that you get, which is insanely light for a tube bumper. Um, up front, KC lights, right? Got the G4s up here. Um, both of the nice thing about both of these lights, which may vary from other people's setups, is that both of both of these are SAE lights, which means they're street legal. Um, and the main reason why I went for street legal lights here is because, like I said, we do a lot of cross country travel, and sometimes we just need that extra light on the highway as additional high beams, primarily for spotting deer and not hitting them at night. So um, I've got those two up front here, which have worked great, um, and they've got the covers right, the amber covers on them now. Uh, which you can pull off if you need white light All right so um i've got a winch back here ten thousand pounds factory 55 um hook which has worked really really well um and then if you want to scoot down we can check out what's underneath um which is some of the meat of what gets trekkie going on the trail reliably we've got starting off with a set of king um, extended travel coilovers, the 2.5s with adjusters. Um, great setup there. Um, use the adjusters quite extensively and it really does help quite a bit. Uh, Camberg uh, lower control arm adds a lot of beef to this setup. And I think I'd effectively have to rip them off the frame before I even damage them. They're that, they're that well done. Camberg um, billet uppers with uh, both of them have a uniball up and, up and bottom, uh, which help maximize your articulation and it's been running strong and reliably and smooth ever since. So super beefy setup up front. And again, those for those moments when you just plan plan for the worst and expect the best. Over here, aluminum skid plate made by Sphere. Um, great company. Um, they've been they make some really cool stuff. Uh, they pride themselves on making things that are direct bolt on, so you don't have to add any special things to it or um, make any new holes or whatnot. Which true to form is exactly what happened here. You can see I already kind of gave it a good little yanger on a rock and it's been doing fantastic. Up front I've got some new headlights. Um, this is just because factory headlights are just never that great I think on a lot of vehicles. So I've got some projection LED headlights added in here. Um, I've got the KC light bar up top. That's a 50 inch um, light bar up there with the round uh, Gravity Pro 6s and then of course the custom Truckee light covers. <laughs> Um, I've got my dead man all the way up top, um, which is always great for extra recovery gear. Um, acts it, that, that thing is a lot more than just a recovery kit. We've used it for a lot of things on various trips. It could be a ground mat for getting underneath the vehicle. It could be a tree saver. It could be throw it around a rock to winch yourself out. So many uses, so functional. That has probably been um, also a very heavily used uh, piece of kit. So if you want to squeeze through here, we can go around and see what's on the passenger side. So we'll start down below, which is the another set of DeMello sliders. Um, same thing, I put those in the truck fairly early and they've been rock solid ever since. Um, great piece of protection there for the side, especially given how these suicide doors work. Um, 
there's no B pillar. So it's really important that I don't crush that bottom piece. <laughs> um, I typically like to travel with a goodie bag right here in the front. Um, and I keep a lot of different things in here, but primarily things that I want quick access to. So it's not just food. Um, so like right now I have like a, a loaf of bread that's either refrigerated. Um, so I keep that in here for making quick sandwiches. Um, some hydration stuff that I pack in here. Um, instant coffee when I, when I don't have time or cannot brew coffee, I have instant coffee in there. Um, on this particular trip, um, I brought some oxygen boost because we were at elevation. So that helps um, making sure you don't get the elevation sickness. Um, some snacks, always have a mug handy in here because you never know when you're gonna need water or anything else that needs to go in a mug. So that goes there. And the rest is just miscellaneous snacks for you know on the road so I don't have to dig around in the back. It's always here in the passenger seat um, if I need it. Sometimes I'll put a spare battery in here. Sometimes I'll put um, a bag of chips. Um, for example, right here tucked in, I always have a plate handy. Right, so just stuff that kind of makes things less stressful on a trip. And especially when you're on the road for two weeks, that's kind of what it comes down to is enjoying the trip by having convenience. And so that's, and you'll find your own ways that work for you. And this is what works for me. Um, next to that, I have my camera bag that always sits right here next to it. And that way, and you'll notice I leave it open because that way I can just grab the camera, grab the camera, take my shots, slides right back in and just sits there. And so I can grab that from the driver's seat pull over, take some shots out of the window or the front window, slot it back in and keep going without skipping a beat. Makes it super easy. Uh, spare radio also sits here um, because you never know when you gotta jump out, whether it's spotting somebody or you gotta go check on something and you always wanna be in communication and sometimes you're, you know, first vehicle on a line of seven, right? So, or second vehicle on a line of eight, right? So you need to be able to have some comms. So I always have a, a handheld sitting right here in the seat. And that pretty much makes up kind of the front seat in the cockpit and how I've had it configured. Um, in the back, I also keep my water source handy. So I have my Dometic tank there, um, which is really nice because same thing, I've got my mug over here and other goodies, my hydration kit. So that keeps that um, handy. I've got my power supply right next to that. And that's the wagon 1200. Um, that powers the fridge and, it, and as it's doing right now, it recharges a bunch of other goodies. Um, it's charging my little coffee maker um, and I'm charging another spare battery there on the side. Uh, behind that, I have uh, what I call, what I use as a bear box. It's a Yeti cooler um, and I have two padlocks in one of my other boxes. So if I need to pull it out, if we're in a place that's just extremely sensitive to bears and I have food that is extremely smelly, I say like bags of jerky that are already opened, um, I put them in there, pull it out, put a couple of padlocks in and drag it away from camp or put it in a, in a bear box if we're in an established campsite. Um, but that's what acts as my bear uh, protection. It's sealed, so it, work, it actually works really well and we've never had a problem with bears since uh, using that. So really, really good. Um, last thing is up front. This thing, uh, it's my Garmin. I keep that in the dash on the window all the time. Right now it's kind of a piece of shit, so fuck that. Um, should we climb on the roof? Can you give me just kind of a, a overhead kind of view from yeah. here? So out in back, um, the newest addition to the roof is the Yakima Road Shower up here on the on the left. And that thing has been a game changer. That's a seven gallon aluminum pressurized tank. Um, it's It heats up with the sun because it's black and it does really well. Um, I think at the last campsite, I took a, a 95 degree shower, which was pressurized, which was completely game changing. Um, the hose tucks nicely underneath or on the lower side, adjustable valve. I mean, it really is as simple as it is. It's a game changer. It's got a safety blow off valve, which was super useful when we, were, when we went from sea level up to 14,000 feet in elevation. Super handy to be able to know that that thing, when it over pressurizes, will safely blow off on its own. Um, I brought one Rotopax for this trip. Uh, we did some research there and uh, we found that we were crisscrossing quite a few little mountain towns and all of them happen to have fuel. So didn't stress too much about that and kept it simple. Up on the front, which you can't really see, it's got attraction boards. I think you know what those look like. They're pretty standard um, and they're still up there. So that's good news. This bad boy is probably one of the funnest and most engaging things I've added to the FJ and that's my Overland Vehicle Systems 270 degree awning. I say that because when that thing comes out, it comes out to about here and it covers the entire back end of the FJ. And it's so big that it, it quickly draws kind of whoever we're camping with. 
and this just becomes kind of the hangout area. So it's kind of more of like the social engagement, like just what have we been doing? We all pull our chairs out, have a good time. So this thing has been really good for just kind of rallying and just having fun and kind of just, once that thing comes out, it's time to chill. So I love it. Um, I've had that for a good like three years now and it's been utterly flawless and snow, rain, wind. Um, just do what you got to do to anchor down and you know for the respective situations and it's been absolutely perfect so really, appreci really appreciate you showing us your rig thank you yeah absolutely i appreciate you taking the time to walk around with me if you got any questions you can shoot them at me at trucky mctruckface on instagram